Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Gizmo Joe. As you can see in front of us, we have a Android TV box. It's not just any Android TV box, it's the Xiaomi Mi Box S. Now, I did a review on this particular box uh, a little while ago. I'll uh, you know try to leave a link down in the description for you if you want to check out that video. But uh, I picked this guy up for 40 bucks at Walmart when I was in the United States a couple years ago. And I brought it back here because in Australia, these guys are kind of hard to find. You got to pick them up on eBay, and usually they're kind of overpriced, in my opinion, you know, $100, $150 Australian. But they sell this guy at Walmart for 40 bucks. So when I went to go visit my folks a couple years ago, I was in a Walmart, I saw one, and I said, yes, I'm buying this. Now, the good thing about this is that it runs Android TV. I am a big fan of the Android TV interface. I think it looks clean. It's it's just excellent. It's better than Apple TV, in my opinion. It's and you know you can put basically any app on here. It's it's great. Um, so you could do some light gaming. You could. Uh, I mean, I've had my you know VPN on this guy in order to sort of circumvent some geo restrictions. There's just tons of stuff that you can do with this. And so I was using this in my living room as sort of my main streaming box. Um, you know, all the services that I use, but also uh, I had Cody installed on this guy, and it was able to essentially stream uh, shows and movies and stuff that I have on my local NAS. So. I was running is into issues with this guy. Number one, the big problem with this is that it's only got eight gigabytes of storage, and uh, you can't expand it. But I'll, the issue was was basically um, I had a little USB stick on the back of this, and that's where essentially all my apps were living. So instead of installing apps to the internal memory on the device, because again, it's only eight gigs, so you probably only have about four point four usable once you get past all the system stuff. I was putting a, all my apps on a USB. Um, because again, you can use that USB as expandable storage, but I was coming up to this weird issue where it basically was telling me that the USB had been ejected and that it could be safely removed and that it wasn't connected. So obviously none of my apps were showing up. Well, I rebooted the whole thing. I factory reset it, put a brand new USB in there. And sure enough, after a week, it was doing the same thing. After some sleuthing online in forums and stuff like that, they basically said that your USB port on this is shot for whatever reason. So I looked at this and said, well, what am I going to do? I love Kodi. I think it's a great little user interface, particularly for movies and TV shows in your own personal collection. So what I'm going to do with this guy is move this from my main TV downstairs, upstairs into the bedroom, because I can still do YouTube and Netflix and a lot of sort of stuff on this. I just can't run any Kodi stuff on it. But to be honest, I don't really watch a lot of movies and stuff when I'm in bed. It's mainly shorter stuff. So this is going to be my streaming box for upstairs in my bedroom. So I had to get something else to essentially go downstairs on my main TV. And so what I ended up going with is the NVIDIA Shield TV. Now these guys have been around since 2005. Um, they are considered to be the sort of best Android streaming box money can buy that also has 4K HDR Android TV. Again, love the Android TV interface. Now, this is uh, the 2019 model. It is the, there's two different ones. You can get the Shield uh, Pro or you can get the Shield TV. So this one is the tube style, uh, which is interesting because I've never seen a, uh, most of the boxes that I've seen in the past are these square things. Um, so this one obviously is a tube style design. It's definitely interesting. Um, I think it will you know, either look good on a shelf or sort of hidden behind your TV, whatever you prefer. Um, but I did a lot of research and they were like, look, this is the best money could buy. Now, obviously there's the Pro, but uh, the big difference between the Pro and the regular is that this has two gigabytes of RAM, whereas the other one's got three gigabytes of RAM. Otherwise, they use the same processor and all that sort of stuff. Since I mainly just stream video on this, I don't do a lot of gaming or whatever, I figured that the standard one was going to be fine for my purposes, so that's why I went with this one. Um, now, I picked this up from Harvey Norman, and that is a retailer in Australia, and I got it for 198 bucks. Now, I don't know if that means uh, that there's a new... Uh, NVIDIA has got a new model coming out or whatever. I know that there's been lots of speculation that they're going to upgrade the uh, processor and all that sort of stuff. Um, but like I said, I didn't really care because I just mainly stream video. And from what I understand, even the 2015 version of the Shield um, can basically run anything you throw at it. So 
I figured this was a great deal because normally this guy is 279 or about 250 or so Australian dollars. And so for 198 bucks, I looked at that as a steal. So what I want to do today for today's video is just do a little unboxing and check out what's in the box. So let's grab a cutter and find out. Okay, everybody, I've got my trusty box cutter here. I know it's not very flashy, but, you know, it serves its purpose. So uh, what we have are some uh, little security tape here to prevent theft from the store. So I think... I think that's it. I think those are the only... And yep, it's just sliding out here. All right, here we go. Okay, all right. Well, uh, before we take a look at what's inside the box, let's just take a look at the box really, really quickly. Um, so obviously what's inside, you get your little tube shield, you got the remote, and it looks like it comes with either a power cord or an HDMI. I think that's a power cord. Um, so basically what you have is the NVIDIA Tegra X1 Plus processor. Like I said, that's the same processor that's in the Pro version. So, um, you know, you're going to get very similar sort of performance. It's got this 256 core NVIDIA GPU. Um, again, it supports Dolby Atmos, Dolby Digital Plus. It's got two gigabytes of RAM, so the Pro version has three. Um, I don't think that there's going to be really that big of a difference there in terms of noticeable difference. It's only got a measly eight gigabytes of storage, but it has micro SD expandability. So I've got a heap of micro SD cards laying around, including some fairly large ones, I think at about 128 gigs. I'm going to chuck one of those in there, and I should be able to load any app on there. I shouldn't have any issues with storage. Um, obviously, it supports Wi-Fi, so you get your uh, AC dual band, uh, which is great. It also has a Ethernet port. I'm going to put this downstairs. Um, it's not anywhere near my router, so I'm just going to be using it on Wi-Fi. And it's also got Bluetooth 5.0, uh, which is good because I want to try to essentially connect this to a Bluetooth speaker for sound. Um, but uh, as you can see, it supports 4K HDR. It also has this AI upscaling. Basically, what I understand, I did a little bit of research, and people were saying that it basically is just putting a filter on stuff to try to essentially smooth out some of the rough edges or the pixelation that you might see on a um, you know higher resolution television if you've got a more low res sort of video source or whatever it will sort of try to smooth it out people seem to say it's not fantastic but it's better than nothing and uh, you know it supports a whole bunch of Nvidia games um, Google Play and it's also got the remote I believe has uh, voice control. Now, one thing about this particular guy is that because it only has two gigabytes of RAM, uh, NVIDIA went with a 32-bit uh, architecture for the OS. Um, now, some people are going to say that that's a deal breaker because they're going to say, well, what about 64-bit apps and all that sort of stuff? And basically, um, I did a bunch of research. There's a, another YouTuber by the name of ETA Prime who's very popular. He basically went through what you can and can't run on this guy and basically the only thing that he ran into that you won't be able to run are a handful of games I think there was like you know Borderlands Resident Evil you know some like AAA titles you won't be able to run on this guy uh, but again it's very minuscule uh, not very many and the Dolphin emulator so the Wii, Wii U uh, emulator, GameCube, I think it does as well. If you are looking to run that particular emulator, so again, the Dolphin emulator for GameCube, Wii, and Wii U, uh, then you want to definitely go with the Pro version because the Pro version has the 64-bit architecture as well as the 3 gigabytes of RAM uh, in order to run it. This guy is not going to do it. It just won't install because, again, it's 32-bit. Uh, and the Dolphin emulator is only for 64-bit devices. So if that's going to be a deal breaker, go for the Pro version. But otherwise, I think you're safe just to go with this, especially if you're someone like me who just wants to stream video. So let's push this off to the side. See you later. And have a look at the box. So I'm not even really sure how to get this. I think we slide. Okay, yeah. So we slide that out. Put that off to the side. What's in here? Okay, so, all right, it looks like we've got, there's nothing else in here. All right, let me put that off to the side. And what do we got here? So I think this is just the power cable and the instructions, and that looks exactly like what it is. So uh, just here we've got your support guide. Um, I think it's going to be pretty easy 
to set up, so I don't think I'll need that. But it might have some phone numbers or something in case I need to call somebody. Oh, we've got a quick start guide as well. So obviously, as you can see, it's super simple. And we've got some support numbers. All right, great, awesome, fantastic. I'll stick that off to the side. Uh, this is just your power cable. So let's take a look at what sort of cable it is. So we've got this, you know, I'm in Australia and I have to, I'm going to go on a tangent here, but Australian plugs drive me nuts. And I know the UK plugs are also quite large as well, but like, why do you have this big thing on the end? I find it so difficult to plug things in next to each other, particularly on just like a standard uh, power strip or something. It, they literally drive me nuts. Um, but anyway, I'm in Australia, so I just got to deal with what's given to me. So obviously this is my power cable and it looks like it's just a standard barrel plug so obviously we can swap that out pretty easily um, I think that it, like most electronics this guy is going to have a um, the ability to run on 120 to 240 volts so you should be able to just swap this power cord out with say an American one or whatever if you were traveling and you wanted to take it traveling with you um, but anyway alright so that's the power cable that's boring stuff so let's just put that off to the side alright let's take a look at this this is what we all came here for so um, let me wiggle this guy off okay I don't mind the packaging I think it's actually quite smart it does feel nice and secure. Okay, so here, this is like really, I shouldn't say bizarre, but it is kind of bizarre. Okay, all right, and the remote. All right, well, first, let's take a look at the device itself. So as you can see, it is that tubular sort of shape. The missus said it looked like a telescope, um, and I guess it kind of does. Like, um, I don't know, a pirate or something, I'm going to... You know, anyway, a dumb joke. Anyway, so as you can see, it just has this one accent sort of line that goes across. Um, other than that, it's sort of this matte plastic. It's definitely a plastic. It's not an aluminum or anything. You get the NVIDIA logo down on the end here. If we flick it around here, um, so it looks like what we're looking at here is the HDMI um, out or the input there. And then underneath it directly, I know it's really, really hard to see, but underneath it directly is that micro SD card slot. So again, if you want to expand the storage, micro SD card into that slot right there, you'll be able to install stuff onto that. And then we've got our HDMI, and obviously it looks like there's some vents there for cooling. Um, I'm not sure if it's got a fan inside or if it's just passively cooled. Anyway, we flick it over onto the other end, and we've got our power. And then we've just got the Ethernet port right there. So that's it. There's not really much to say about this guy other than the fact that, you know, it's a tube. Um, it's not very heavy either. There's not much to it. Um, I mean, look, if you've ever run track or whatever and you've had the baton or you've got to pass it off, those things are pretty heavy. This guy is pretty light. Um, again, I think you could probably sort of hang this behind your TV or, you know, wedge it between some I don't know, a shelf somewhere or whatever. I do find it kind of strange because it does tend to roll a little bit. Um, it's an odd sort of design choice in my opinion. you think they would put some feet or something on it to prevent it from rolling. Like if I wanted to just put it down on a bookshelf or something like that, um, I feel like this is not the best design. It's definitely unique because it's not just a box, but um, you would think that they would have something to stabilize it a little bit. So, uh, not crazy about that, but again, that's a minor sort of complaint. All right, let's stick this guy off to the side and take a look at this remote. Now, from what I understand, the original NVIDIA Shields had a remote that people were not happy with. Um, it was very thin. Uh, I don't think it was rechargeable. And uh, yeah, people were losing it, and it was a, a kind of a pain. But this obviously looks like a triangle. It's got this triangle shape. It's always going to lay flat. It's not going to slide anywhere. It's not going to roll, obviously. Um, so if we take a look at the remote, um, this is a Bluetooth remote. So it's going to pair just wirelessly. And um, we have a dedicated Netflix button. We've got our volume buttons here. We've got our voice command button. We've got a... Uh, I think our, well, it looks like a record, but it could be a stop. I think that might be the user assignable button. There is one button on this remote where you can assign it to whatever you want. So like, let's say, you know, you want this button to open Spotify or something. Um, you can assign that button, click it, and Spotify would open or whatever. Um, we've got our play button, uh, and then we've got our, our sorry, that's our um, back button. 
We've got our uh, sort of fast forward button, our play pause, and then our rewind button. And then up here, obviously, we have our select button. That's the one that's in the middle. And the ring sort of directional um, thing here. And then I think this is the men menu or the settings button. And then obviously power. So look, I mean, it's a pretty standard remote. Um, you know, some people lament the fact that there's not dedicated buttons for different services, but, uh, you know, I kind of get that. I, I don't subscribe to every service, so having a bunch of buttons on here um, doesn't really, um, you know, strike my fancy at all. Um, I would prefer actually a more minimal sort of thing. Um, look, it's a weird sort of remote. It's it's very chunky, and obviously that triangle shape I mean, it's not, that, it's not that it's awkward in the hand. It just, you know, again, I'm not used to it. I think over time, I'll get used to that sort of feeling in my hand. But it does sort of feel a bit awkward. But, I mean, look, it's a remote. It feels pretty solid. It feels solidly built. Um, it doesn't, I don't think I'm going to lose this. Um, I will say, compared to the Xiaomi Mi uh, box remote, this definitely feels more substantial. The Xiaomi... Uh, me box the select sort of um, directional pad up top felt very clicky and, and weird almost like it was sort of a bit cheap this definitely feels uh, like a premium sort of build so I don't think um, I'll need to replace this uh, anytime soon I'm not 100% sure where the batteries go um, I'm gonna have to read that manual I guess um, unless it's rechargeable I'm not really sure I'm not really sure how this works um, but anyway, that's just a quick sort of rundown of the NVIDIA Shield TV. I'm really excited to get this thing up and running. Um, maybe I'll do a video on that uh, once I get everything installed and ready to go. And we can do some uh, you know, streaming. We can maybe do some gaming or whatever. But uh, yeah. Very happy with this purchase. Like I said, it's $198 right now on sale at Harvey Norman if you are in Australia, which is a pretty good deal because I believe NVIDIA's got this up for $279. I want to say Amazon is the same, and most other retailers, they sell it for about $250. So $198 is definitely pretty good regardless of whether they're coming out with a new model soon or not. But anyway, that's going to do it, guys. If you have any questions, definitely let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Anyway, this is Gizmo Joe signing off.